Hello everyone, welcome to Wrath of Math Lessons. I'm your host, Sean Ian, and today's video we're talking about a little bit of logic, the inverse of conditional statements. What is the inverse of a conditional statement? So if we have a conditional statement, P implies Q, the inverse of this statement is basically negating both sides. So that is not P implies not Q. You take the negative of both sides. Similarly, if we had a statement P implies not Q, then the inverse of this statement is just not P implies Q. It works just like multiplying by a negative. Now, from P implies Q, we cannot assume that not P implies not Q is true. So this does not follow from that. However, the inverse of a statement, like this one here, is logically equivalent to the converse of the statement, Q implies P. So Q implies P is logically equivalent to not P implies not Q. Similarly, of course, the converse cannot be assumed from the original statement. So P implies Q does not imply the inverse, nor does it imply the converse. However, the converse and the inverse are logically equivalent. So if one is true, then of course you know that the other is also true. So now I'll just write out an example for you and we will call it a day. All right, so here we have a tried and true example for talking about logic. If it is raining, then the grass is wet. It is raining is our P and the grass is wet is our Q. So if we wanna take the inverse of this statement, we simply take the opposite of both P and Q and leave them in the order that they're currently in. So it's, if it is not raining, then the grass is not wet. That is what the inverse is. So I'll write that out real quick. So here's the inverse. If it is not raining, then the grass is not wet. Now, the original statement, of course, is essentially true. If you're talking, um, you know, if it's raining in the location that you're in, then the grass in the location that you're in is gonna be wet. The grass, it isn't covered up by stuff, obviously. And then the inverse, if it is not raining, then the grass is not wet. Well, this is not true, because as soon as it stops raining, the grass will still be wet, even though it's not raining. So you can see that the inverse does not necessarily follow from the original statement. And now if you took the converse of the original statement, you would have, if the grass is wet, then it is raining. That, of course, is also not true for the same reasons that this is not true, which makes sense because, like I said, this inverse is logically equivalent to the converse of the original statement. So that is what the inverse of a conditional statement, if P, then Q is. It becomes if not P, then not Q, as you can see here. So I hope this video helped you understand what the inverse of a conditional statement is and some of its logical equivalencies. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. All the way up here, dear Won't you please come to me? You love it up here, dear There's a light where I float That erases